Well, Macy Gray and her gritty whiskey voice first tasted the heights of pop stardom in 1999 with the release of her smash debut, On How Life Is, an album that went triple platinum in both the United States and Canada. And though she's enjoyed a successful career since then, some disappointment over sales of her last record prompted her to do a bit of soul searching. The result is The Sellout, Macy Gray's fifth studio record, which has her taking a back to basics approach with the music she makes. And while it may have been a bit of soul searching that inspired the creation of The Sellout, the resulting music is remarkably uplifting. And I'm pleased to have Macy Gray with me live in Studio Q. Hello. Hello. What a pleasure it is to have you here. Oh, thank you. Welcome back to Canada. I know. You've been kind of hanging around for the last few days, right? You know, yeah. You, did you enjoy the, did you get part, take part in the Pride festivities yesterday at all? Yesterday, no. I was I was with my mom all day. My mom came out. So um, Your mom came up here? Yeah, she drove up from Ohio. That's pretty sweet. I know. Not so bad. <laughs> well, yeah. Good. Well, nice to, nice to have you and your mom here. She brought her today. Well, we went to the races, though. Oh, yeah. She wanted to see the queen. The queen was at the races. Yeah, I did, did mom stuff all day yesterday. Did you meet the queen? No, we got there like, uh, there was only like three races left, and they said it was too late because they had to go through too many channels. And I was like, can you just call her? <laughs> but it was, um, it was uh, you know, they said it was too much drama, you know, for, right, right, for the right. time we had left. Right, right. What's the queen's cell phone number? How do you get in touch with the queen when you, <laughs> when you need her at the, at the last minute? We uh, got pictures, though. Uh, did you? Yeah. The, oh, were you close enough to take pictures of her? Yeah, they had this little section where she was like sitting by the finish line, and and um, people went over and took pictures. It's a stuff. remarkable lady, eighty-four years old. I know. You know, uh, traveling the world, representing. It's uh, it's 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 so impressive. No, to see she, yeah, she's awesome. Uh, this, uh, I know. You, I'm going to start with a question. I hate asking questions that everybody uh, asks, <laughs> but I, but but when you call your record the sellout, it's a provocative enough title that people are going to ask you about it. So so tell me a bit about uh, the genesis of this name. Where does the sellout come from? Oh, because when when I was uh when I was making this record, I had like all these different ideas, you know, and, and one of them was I thought maybe I'll just do this whole like dance thing that everybody's doing and. And um, I'll do like a really pop record and see how that goes, you know. But I, um, it didn't work out. I didn't, I didn't uh, enjoy it, and I didn't like my voice on it, and it just wasn't fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Like it's not fun not being, you know, not doing what you want to do. Not being yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, uh, I kind of failed at conformity, you know. <laughs> right. So and, this is an ironic it, title. Yeah, yeah, so I ended up doing, so it's, it's just about the journey of, you know, making this album and, and all the little, uh, you know, ups and downs I had on the way. Okay, well, let's get into these ups and downs. So what happened after the last record, Big? I mean, the record did pretty well, mm -hmm. uh, and you're working with Justin Timberlake and a couple of people on, their, on that record. And then, and then, and then what happened? There's, tell the story of how uh, you thought you'd work with a bunch of people on this record and you started making phone calls. Uh, tell, tell me what happened after this. Oh, just, um... That was the thing. Like I, I just got, I just got to the point where I, I, I was, you know, questioning like what I was gonna do next. Like what, what I was gonna talk. Like if I had anything to offer, you know, because it's cool to like go in the studio and make a bunch of songs and pick the best ten or twelve, you know. But I wanted to uh, do something refreshing, and and if I had anything to say, you know what I mean. Right, right, Other right. than, you know, something stupid, you know. So. Um, that just that just the whole process and finding that took a while. So, you know, I tried all these different things like different producers and and um, it, I mean we have a ton of songs. I actually did a couple of dance records. Some of them are pretty cool. And um, that you're I, not gonna release. Well, one of them got leaked out. This song that we have called Slapovich that did really good. <laughs> and um, but, but what's the story about? I mean, you said your first inclination after after Big, after the two thousand and second yeah. record, was to go out and get the best writers and producers behind you. But when you tried, your calls weren't returned. Yeah, I said that to an interview, and he totally blew it out of proportion. Okay, so that's that's just <laughs> turned into a big story that wasn't really a big story. Yeah. No, no, like, you know, I, I went in the studio with a bunch of people, but it just, um, it's just a slow process, you know, and, um, and, uh, it just takes a long time and, and then you have to deal with like, you know, managers and agents and stuff. And I just wanted to write, you know, I just right. want to make music and your calls do get returned. They do most of the time. Not Except the time, when you're trying though. to find the queen. Yeah, the queen hasn't hasn't gotten back to me. <laughs> so you made the sellout on your own. I mean, this is yeah. a difference. You paid for the studio time. You hired the musicians. Did taking a more DIY approach liberate you in some way? 
Yeah, it was definitely, you know what happened was I, I, I was reminded of what, what, you know, making records is all about. And, and uh, I, I left my label, so I was totally on my own. And um, so I didn't have anyone to, like, you know, answer to, or I didn't have anybody coming down the studio to check on me mm-hmm. and make sure we were working, or I didn't have a meeting on Friday to play it for everyone, you know? Right, so it was right. just making it for, you know, uh, where, you know, where it just had to be something that I, that I really loved, you know what I mean? And so, so then when that happens, it's pure, you know, it's honest, you know what I mean? It's not and there's and so much an opinion on top of it. Macy, you talk about this record being back to being completely you, yourself. Mm-hmm. What, what does that mean in real terms? What does that actually mean? Being myself? Yeah, as opposed to your other records. Confused. No, I'm good. <laughs> confused about you're, who I am. You're back to being confused, which is more you. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Right, right, right. Really, though, what do you mean? <laughs> that's what you mean. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff. You know, things about love and, and how I really felt about my career, you know, and, and, uh, and you know, what I was going to do in life and, you know, all the things everybody thinks about, you know, on a regular basis. How did you? How do you feel like you couldn't express those things on previous records? Why? Why does this feel like you're more you now? Oh, because just when you when you get in, you know, on a label, there's a lot of opinion. There's a lot of like, you know, no, you should do this, or no, you should try this, or you should work with this person, or, or that's too, you know, nobody does this anymore. You know, you hear that a lot. So, um, so you know, when you're on your own, you don't you don't have you don't have you know some some person telling you those things. So you. Right. You do what you feel, you know. You do, do you, what's right for you. Do you remember the moment where you, um, instead of chasing the pop hits or like, let's find a new sound that's going to be the sound that's going to work in 2010, mm-hmm. where you said, you know what, forget this. I'm going to do this my way, uh, DIY. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, I was listening to Frank Sinatra and he goes, my way. And I just knew it right then and there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just, I don't remember the moment, but... um. But I, I, I just know it, it just really came down to the, that that's what I do best. Like the music that I make, like like that comes natural for me. Like it flows like I can do it in my sleep. You know what I mean? And gotcha. Things should be easy. You know, your work and, and life doesn't have to be so difficult. So if it, it, if it, it becomes harder, like this, you know, excruciating thing, then, then it's probably not right. You know, let me, let me ask you about being completely you in the, in, in the context of this remarkable and distinctive voice you have. People have been talking for a decade about how much they loved your voice. It's funny to hear you say, I mean, at least originally, that you hated your, your voice, right? Mm-hmm. Do you, how do you feel about your voice now? Um, I, I'm, I'm really used to it now, you know? And I think, I think there's some weird thing where it sounds different to me than it does everybody else. <laughs> how does it sound to you? Because it, I sound totally normal to me. But then, you know, when uh, people imitate me, they have this... Right. You know, this imitation of me. And <laughs> I'll be like, I don't even talk like that. You know, and they say, yes, <laughs> right. you do. Right, right. Sort of a raspy yeah. kind of thing or something. I don't know. It's like right now I sound totally normal. Sound normal to you. Yeah, to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. But why Why did you dislike it in the first place? Well, just because when I was a kid, you know, everyone would make fun of my voice. So, you know, when you're a kid, that's painful. But when you grow up, you know, you just give them the finger, you know what I mean? Well, that's but yeah, thing. in their face. I mean, you've, you've taken that voice and turned it into a massive career, right? Yeah. Not so bad. <laughs> uh, tell me a bit about making this record. I'm looking at the liner notes. How does this work? I mean, I get that you did this yourself. At the same time, there's credit, there's, there's 21 writers on this record, 14 producers, including yourself, and you're one of the writers on every song as well. How do you maintain a sense of cohesion, Macy, when you've got so many cooks in the kitchen? Oh, well, um, I have a little writing crew that, that I have, like six people that I, I write with all the time. And um, and uh, producer-wise, um, I, I went into the studio with Jared and Whitey first. We started the record, and then, uh, and then I met Hit Boy, and there's Kaz James, and there's Ronnie Jerkins, and Blah blah blah. So it was just like a, a thing, like people that wanted to come down, and when I called them, and and you know people that I was comfortable with. And do you worry about how this is all going to sound like one record if you use a bunch of different people? No, because because I was there, kind of like directing it, like telling them like 
No, and you have and cool. you have he the distinctive it. voice. Yeah, I have. <laughs> that sounds normal to you. It sounds really normal. <laughs> uh, the record came out uh, of what, some dark times, you say, but there's a lot of optimism on this record, especially on the, the first single, "Beauty in the World," which has a really fun video too. Uh, uh, tell me about uh, this song, "Beauty in the World." Oh, it's a, it's just a song about uh, how how um you know you you hear every day about the things that are, are crazy in the world and it's just about keeping your head up and, and uh you know finding the the good things like the light you know and the fun that you know and focusing on good stuff you know because we get bombarded with what's wrong and what we have to go do today and what needs to be fixed and what needs to be said. That is such an uplifting song. How do you how do you find the beauty in 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 the in the dark days? How do you f- turn it around? Um well, I usually just sleep through it and watch a couple reality shows. <laughs> no, just um I don't know cuz I I think I'm just a naturally uh, optimistic person. Or there's a possibility that I'm oblivious to reality or something. But I think I just naturally um, uh, see, like, you know, the upside. Most of the times, I definitely have a pessimistic sarcasm Mm -hmm. element to me. But but most of the time, you know, I'm I'm looking up, I think. There's a storyline about you. I never know... You know how much of this is actually coming from someone like you, or, or how much of it is the story that's been written about you or for you. And so I'm going to ask you, where you had this massive hit on your first record, mm-hmm. um, albeit after a while of writing songs for other folks and, and being involved in the music business, and then it's like since then you've been trying to ca- recapture the the massive success of your debut. Do you feel that? Do you feel like there's a pressure for you to re- recapture the heights of I Try? No, no, not me personally. I mean, um, you just get such a hard time for it. Like, you know, every story I would read was like, uh, she did, I tried, and then went on this horrible downward slope, you know. <laughs> and I'm reading it like, wait a minute, like, I'm doing all right, you know. Or I remember, you know, my first record sold, I think, 9 million copies, and my second one sold 2.1. Right. And I got, you know. Like, almost in trouble for that. Like, I right, thought... Right, a measly two million records. No, yeah. I thought that was a lot of people. I thought that was cool, yeah. you know. So, I don't know. I, I just think people put a lot of... of uh, put, put way too much uh, credit to numbers, you know, mm. what numbers and how much, you know. Do you think about it? Did you think about it when you were making this record? I, I, can I... Do you think about having hits that would be as big as your first record? Well, it's just like any other gig, like it's survival, you know, like if you if, if you sell records, then, you know, your record label will give you more money, you know what mm. I mean? And then you can eat and take vacations to Canada, do you know what I mean? With mom. But, you, mom. Don't, but you don't have any of those problems anymore, do you? What problems? I don't know, financial, you don't have to worry about that. After I don't you've have had, financial problems? You know, when you have that kind of a, 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 as big a hits as, as you've had, do you, do you worry about making ends meet? Not ends meet, but you know, every you know, we just came out of a recession, and it affected everybody in the record business. Right. Has definitely taken a hit, so it's definitely everyone's lifestyle has changed, you know, and that you know that goes for everyone, not just you know. I it, wish I was exclusive; I was the only one in the world that didn't get hit. But <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, you're in your early forties now. Yeah. You recently pointed some fingers at the record industry for being ageist. Tell mm. me, tell me about that. Oh, I just think that that um, there's there's this uh, this myth like that after thirty that you you know you become a little useless because there's no audience for you you mm-hmm. know or right. that um, people over thirty don't buy music you know and um, and it's funny because as soon as as the record industry sort of really started focusing on teenagers that that was around the same time that sales started going way down you know right. so. Right. Um, I just talked about how, you know, that, that people over 30, 35, you know, that they, they need to be uh, lyrically satisfied too, you know, that there need to be songs that talk about how they, their day went and what they want out of mm-hmm. life and, and, uh, and how they feel and what they do at night, you know what I mean? And, um, and because the record industry kind of uh, eliminates, you know, singers that get older, there's, there's no one that services that culture, you know. So, um, or that age group. 
So I just I wrote this article for the Huffington Post about it, and and they published it. It was pretty cool. Do you feel old? Do I feel old? Yeah. No, not mm. at all. You don't seem old. No, I don't, it's not. I don't. I don't. Feel, I'm actually really enjoying, you know, not being as confused as I used to be, and and uh, you know, just being like a little more settled in what I want and mm. what I need instead of like, you know, when you're younger, you don't. You know, you think you know everything, but you know, <laughs> you don't know as much as you do when you get older. So, I'm actually really, really having having a ball. Missy Graham, I'm really enjoying this this new record. Um, thank you. And, and I, I really uh, thank you for coming in and, and talking about it. This uh, I want to go out on a song called "Kissed It." What well, do you want to tell us about this song? Um, "Kissed It" is about this song about how um, you know some people stay in relationships because the oral sex is so great. <laughs> that's true i think yeah yeah <laughs> thanks for being in here all right thank it's been you. such a pleasure that's grammy winning soul singer macy gray joining me here in studio q her brand new record the sellout is available from concord records